with the exception of the oral cavity, the entire gastrointestinal tract is composed of four basic layers or tunics. These are starting with at the lumen and moving outward, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis externa, and the serosa. Let's briefly discuss each of these layers, starting with the mucosa. First, let's talk about the mucosa. So the mucosa is the innermost layer of the GI tract. It is an epithelial membrane, meaning that it consists of a layer of surface epithelium supported by a deeper layer of connective tissue, areolar tissue specifically known as the lamina propria. The surface epithelia are in contact with the lumen. The cells of the surface epithelium in the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus, as well as the anus, are stratified squamous cells. In the stomach, small and large intestine, the cells are simple columnar. There are also numerous goblet cells, specialized cells, which produce mucus to lubricate the GI tract for ease of movement of substances through the GI tract and also for protection of the GI tract. There is also a small, smooth muscle layer which contracts and throws the lining of the mucosa into folds. The mucosa serves as a barrier for microorganisms in the lumen, preventing them from accessing deeper tissues of the GI tract as well as the blood. The mucosa is responsible for the release of numerous digestive enzymes to support digestion and also participates in the absorption of nutrients from the lumen and eventually into the bloodstream. Deep to the mucosa is the submucosa. The submucosa consists of connective tissue. There are numerous blood vessels and lymphatic vessels that are embedded in the connective tissue, and they absorb nutrients that are transported by cells of the mucosa from the lumen. There are also numerous glands in the submucosa which secrete substances into the lumen to support digestion. Lastly, there are numerous networks of nerves in the submucosa that control the activity of the GI tract. Moving from the submucosa outward, the next layer is the muscularis externa. The muscularis externa is responsible for the movement of substances through the GI tract. It contains two layers of smooth muscles an inner circular layer, and an outer longitudinal layer. The mouth, pharynx, and anus also contain skeletal muscles. And like the submucosa, there are a network of nerves for control of the activity of the GI tract found in the muscularis externa as well. Let's now look at the final layer of the GI tract, the serosa. The serosa is the outermost layer or tunic of the GI tract. It consists of a layer of simple squamous epithelial cells supported by a deeper layer of areolar tissue. Its function is to protect the outer surface of the GI tract. It is also called the visceral peritoneum. Notice that there are extensions of the serosa that envelop blood vessels and nerves that extend from the GI tract. These mesenteries, as they are called, not only protect these blood vessels and nerves that serve the GI tract, but they also extend to the walls of the abdominal cavity and help anchor the GI tract in place. Let's talk more now about the peritoneum. Looking at your study guide, you will see the heading intestinal wall microscope slide. 
you will be responsible for identifying the layers and structures of the wall of the small intestine as seen on a microscopic slide of the small intestine. And I list everything that you have to know, lumen, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, serosa, and villi. I also list some structures that you don't have to know. That's why I have, for your information, no ID. You don't have to know them, but they are visible and they may help you if you can see them and ID them. They can help you identify the layers in which they are found. So that's why I include these, but again, you don't have to identify them. They're just there if they can possibly provide you with assistance in identifying the layers. To help you understand what exactly you're looking at when you look at the wall of the small intestine under a microscope, let's look at this image uh, from your book or a similar image to what's in your book of the wall of the small intestine. This would be a cross section of the wall of the small intestine and we're going to look at that under the microscope and this is what we would see. So we're looking at here the lumen, the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa with our two layers of smooth muscle and then this thin outer serosa. Now let's compare that to the actual image. This is the mucosa. Remember the mucosa is thrown into these uh, finger-like structures called villi. They increase the surface of the small intestine, which is very important for absorption of nutrients from the lumen into the blood. This layer here is the submucosa, and we have the muscularis externa, and we have this thin outer layer, which is the serosa. To help you understand what exactly you're looking at when you look at the wall of the small intestine under a microscope, let's look at this image uh, from your book or a similar image to what's in your book of the wall of the small intestine. This would be a cross section of the wall of the small intestine and we're going to look at that under the microscope and this is what we would see. So we're looking at here the lumen, the uh, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa with our two layers of smooth muscle and then this thin outer serosa. Now let's compare that to the actual image. This is the mucosa. Remember the mucosa is thrown into these uh, finger-like structures called villi. They increase the surface of the small intestine, which is very important for absorption of nutrients from the lumen into the blood. This layer here is the submucosa, and we have the muscularis externa, and we have this thin outer layer, which is the serosa. On your study guide, you'll also see the heading intestinal villus model. You will be identifying the same structures that you identified on the intestinal wall microscope slide on this model. In addition to those structures, you'll also be identifying capillaries, goblet cell, and a lacteal. That model is a little weird looking. It looks like this. As we did with the intestinal wall microscope slide, we're going to use this image of the wall of the small intestine to help us identify structures and layers, this time on 
the intestinal wall villus model. So here we have our cross section of the wall of the small intestine, lumen, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, serosa, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and then unfortunately in this particular image you can't see it but there would be a thin layer of the serosa out here. Let's go back to the mucosa. So the lumen would be here. Here's our mucosa. The mucosa is thrown into those finger-like projections called villi. Here are the villi here. Some of those villi are dissected such as this one so you can see the blood capillaries where nutrients are absorbed. Others are dissected so that you can see the lymph capillaries, which are called lacteals. That's what this green structure is. Fat is absorbed into the lymphatic system through these lacteals. Lastly, I want to identify the goblet cells. On the left here, we have a villus of the mucosa as seen under the microscope. Notice that some of the cells have little vesicles, little clear vesicles. These are the goblet cells. If you remember from the tissues lab, goblet cells produce what? Mucus. Mucus is important for protecting the lining of the mucosa and also providing lubrication uh, for the movement of substances through the lumen. Over here on the intestinal villus model, you see the villus or villi plural and then you see the goblet cells. The vesicles are shown in blue. So those are the goblet cells.